Rescue mission, day 36. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be real with you. Yesterday was not good. And 99% of it was not because of me. But today is a new day. Today is the day... I go back to the serene shores and I clean up a loose end after buying the gunk busters. Mega Rush level three. Let's see what this looks like in the preview. How long is it stunned? A long time. Only have a couple upgrades left. I just realized I'm going back to the serene shores to clean up a loose end, or is it the blossoming Arcadia? I, mm, I'm gonna have to re. No, it was this. It was this because we went from the giant Wally Wog straight into the engulfed castle. So it's definitely here. There is a bridge that I failed to build. I've been pushing it off. I've been procrastinating going back just because I don't like going back to an area for one thing. But considering, uh, I think it's the it's the day for it. If I'm gonna do it, I might as well do it twice. So let's go back to the serene shores now. Sea Flora Resort, and I can choose what sub-level I go to? Really? Well, I don't remember uh, what sub-level the bridge is on, and I also have zero plastic, so starting on one. Ooh. Huh? I thought we cleared all the creatures out of this cave, but now it's teeming with them yet again? They must have found all this open territory and moved right in. Oh. It just goes to show that even if you explore 100% of a cave, the natural world won't be kept at bay for long. <laughs> Illustrating that I can perhaps farm Pikmin from this, which I have an ice onion, so I don't care about doing. I just care about the plastic. This is it. The reason why I'm here. And I currently do not have enough plastic. That's concerning. Uh, am I cursed? Is that what's happening? Is it just a curse? Maybe. Maybe I can find plastic down here. I don't think I can. I bought the gunk shoes. Why did I buy the gunk shoes? Why did I do it? I knew I needed plastic, but I thought certainly. Certainly I'll get enough plastic in here. It's respawned. It didn't. So who knows if I'm wasting the plastic I have by doing this? I don't know. Maybe I am. Let's see if I can find en enough scraps around here. So here's the thing. That's the last piece of plastic on this floor. There are no more enemies. Which means that I'm going to have to go back to this cave again. And knowing this game, I guarantee... But I'm doing it on the possibility that it's going to reset this to zero. So I need to go into another cave, farm plastic, and come back. Well, silver lining to me doing this, I get to regain some of the purples that I lost. And I guess I don't have to fight the water wraith, but... In doing so, I might get more plastic. Is the water wraith not here? Do the bosses not come back? That's mean. Or maybe that's not mean. Never mind. That is actually very nice. Um, okay, the water wraith doesn't return. Odd. The, the Wally Wog came back. I didn't expect that. Some bosses don't return, but maybe if the big versions of enemies do, 
Uh, either way, we have 10 more purples to show for, and now I can return to the cave and build that bridge. Oh, I should probably finish flowering my Pikmin. Can I? The final floor is what has the violet candy pot buds. Can I just go back to it and farm them for as much as I want? We're about to find out. I can? Wait a minute. Wait, what? Uh. Wait a minute. What on earth? I'm on the final floor. That's where the escape just was. And I can go deeper? What is happening? <laughs> Pluck the Pikmin. I'm gonna flower them and then I don't know what's what's happening. I do not I'm so confused. Why does it say I can go deeper? What do you mean? This is the final floor. I don't know what's happening. Wait, sub-level four? Am I going backwards? Wait. I- what? What? My brain? What? I'm going backwards. This is where I go down and where the base is normally, it's now a cave. That's so weird. Do they, so they, if I leave, uh, how, how I leave? Return to surface. My Pikmin will come with me, right? Yeah, so I can do that. I'm not going to abuse that, but I can go to whatever flow I want, get purples, and then leave. But the cave is then conducted... Wait. Oh, I didn't lose any. A... Yeah. But I'm back where I, I got all the pigment back. <laughs> okay. Sub-level three, the seafloor resort. I'm not gonna lie, I was tilted. I was really tilted by this turn of events. But then I found out that I can just enter whatever floor I want, get purples, and then leave. And then it looks like, and good, good job game. It remembers how many, how much plastic I invested. So I, I farmed 30 for nothing, sure, but I didn't have to invest 30 into this. That is a good outcome. Okay. Let's leave. Uh, mm. No, mm, eh, mm. Do I complete the cave? I think I might, just because I'm paranoid. I don't know, Colin. I doubt the tales of my misadventures on the job would be any help to the rescue corps. I disagree entirely. I believe they could be a useful reference. Every bit of information helps on this planet. Alright, if you insist. First and foremost, you must understand that the schedule is the most important thing. Nobody appreciates late cargo. But the real challenge was learning to withstand long-distance travel and all the heavy lifting. Funny story about that. Um, I, I don't want to hear stories about freight management, Olimar. I want to hear about your time as a castaway. Oh. That Emperor Bullblacks from yesterday was unique. It was a new one. The Sovereign Bullblacks. An Emperor Bullblax of extremely advanced age. It will no longer display the pack behavior commonly exhibited by younger members of its species. Instead, as an, indiv as an indiv individual ages, it leaves the herd and exhibits more solitary behaviors. 
It feeds using its strongly developed legs to leap upon and crush its prey with speed disproportionate to its massive body. To determine the age of any given specimen, you can count the rings of hide calcified in the form of a carapace. One ring forms one roughly one year the creature lives. Individuals with over 100 age rings have been discovered so far. The sovereign Bullblax's back is often co covered in moss and pterodophytes. On a few occasions, specimens have been found within with a rare species of mushroom called a bulbarel growing on its back. The bloom cap boister. Huh. The origin species from which the ranging and toady boister evolved. It still carries a, a large shell on its back. The exposed head and legs are covered by a layer of tough muscle, so it barely moves even, even when attacked. On the other hand, it has extremely sensitive flower-like gills that are characteristic of the mollusking family. When the gills are touched, the boister cannot breathe and must open its shell, exposing its soft body. Amphibious with a gentle demeanor, it simply swallows up anything that happens to enter its field of vision. Kind of like a living vacuum cleaner. As far as I can tell, Moss has been a leafling pup since birth, and most and some of her DNA resembles that of the Pikmin. This is the one point in which she differs from Ochi. When Ochi transformed from a standard space dog to a leafling pup, I started to theorize that the Pikmin are, in some capacity, propagating their DNA in other organisms. The phenomenon in which all those castaways, including myself, became leaflings was very likely caused by being absorbed into the onion. Perhaps that process was also some sort of Pikminification of the body. Pikminified organisms can't leave this planet, so the Pikmin may have been motivated to carry out this process in an effort to secure a permanent leader. Of course, this is all just a theory. Okay! The Gill Demander. The ore-like growth on its back is an, a coagulated body f bodily fluid that it includes a substance similar to sparkula, uh, sparklium, which can make our mechanical sensors go berserk, to use the correct the technical term. This living ore emits a scent that lures the creature's prey, so it's also important for their feeding process. The lantern-like organ atop its head emits electromagnetic waves that are known to affect Pikmin and onions, confusing them into thinking the Gildemander is their leader, allowing it to withdraw Pikmin directly from the onion. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> However, it cannot go as far to co as to command them as a squad, so the Pikmin will often hide under cover and are able to avoid ing ingestion. We have yet to see that, but we also have never seen one of these above ground, but... That seems to suggest that it is a when, not an if. Using the pearl that takes shape inside its body as bait, the, this creature lures prey into its interior and traps it within its shell to feed. It's also worth noting that this pearl may just be an amalgamation of outside materials wrapped in a viscous gelatin exterior. On the frequent occasions when it cannot gather food for itself, this creature can also obtain nutrients when the symbiotic algae within its body photosynthesizes. For this reason, it can often be found, uh, I lost my place, with its mouth open on shoals or sandy beaches that get a lot of sunshine. Here we go back to the giant's hearth. Well, this is going to be the, probably the bulk of this episode. I didn't want to really fixate on the serene shores too much, but it's it's inevitable. Here, though, we have some actual cleanup to do. Yeah, yeah. Gonna take out yellows. Just 20 of them. And we're gonna put this red away. Take out all of our rocks. And then... Split the party. Jeff is going to go get this treasure, which is not back to its original spot, which is weird considering that's what happened yesterday. And then Ochi is going to focus on building up our rock numbers, since half of them drowned themselves last episode. I don't want to fixate on that. It's... It's... it's it, the past... This recording session has been very weird. Um, I think, I will admit that I think I went into the, the recording session with a little bit of tilt on my part, um, with some bad sessions of Splatoons preceding it, but I will also say that, uh, dismiss, there we go, 
I will also say that everything that happened yesterday, or I guess two days ago now, um, it was just kind of mind-blowing. It, it, Pikmin hit me with some Pikmin 1 level, uh, level tilt factor, and I'm, I'm just kind of flabbergasted with how, how this game conducted itself. And I do believe that, uh, I, I've never called a game immature before, but the game acted in a very immature manner. Okay, uh, yellows can grab this. They didn't need to be here. Um, rocks can deal with the wog poles. We can slowly get our numbers back. I think probably by the end of today, we will end in a better spot than this, than rocks have ever been in. So it's not, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. 100%, maybe. Wait, is it it? 100% completion. Wow, there's nothing, there was nothing buried. Nothing was terribly secret. That's weird. So, I do want to go inside this cave again, and I'm going to get some purples back. I think that just makes sense. I think that's a, that's kind of what this area owes me. But otherwise, I think I'll just skip out me, uh, me farming rock Pikmin. And then we'll have our evening moment that is oh so magical. Because I do like this area. This, this is a good area. Still one of my favorites. What the game did is unrelated to this area. It's just... It, some of the cracks showed. Every Pikmin game has cracks, and the fact that it took us this long to find them is impressive, and it's, it really speaks to how good this game is. Oh, I never, I never finished this. Let's do that, because otherwise I'd have to go back. Very good. Violet Candy Pop number one. Violet Candy Pop bud number two. Violet Candy Pop on number three. Whew. Wait, why is this boss back? That's weird. So the Water Wraith doesn't come back, but the Empress Bullblax does? I don't know what to think about that one. Oh, thank you for the nectar. I actually desperately need that. Uh, did they drop? They did not drop nectar. Well, I'm going to do this fight differently, and you know what? I'm going to show it. I'm going to show it just because it went so poorly last time. And I have purples this time. Die, die, die. I lost a purple because of the lock-on feature, actually. It really stinks. Here, you guys get some nectar, please. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It landed on the nectar, and so it canceled the attack. It lands. Oh, word. That is so dumb. That's so dumb. Running by it. Okay. Let's do this fight properly. I lost a purple due to a very stupid thing just now. I'm not going to lose another one. I'm going to gently throw this so that the shock wave edges out the babies, and then I'm just going to do this fight properly. There you go, do your shake. I love that she had to give birth first. Those poor babies, man. You gotta feel bad for the babies. This is such an iconic boss. Is this the Pikmin boss? It's kind of funny. This this fight was not in um it wasn't in Pikmin 1, but it's it's really the perfect Pikmin boss fight. It illustrates so many important principles of timing. Whistling your Pikmin off of the the enemy right before it shakes that is is so integral in against 90% of the cast. It's just an important fight, and it's it's iconic too. Have you ever fought an enemy like this in another game? Not not really. 
I, it, and it shows the scale of the game too. The very first time you you uh, you fight this enemy, there is like an impact crater. Double check, I didn't accidentally get a Pikmin shaken off in there. There's an impact crater showing that the this enemy, which is basically a grub, used to be a lot smaller, and it fell into the cave, and is now is now bigger, and it's so big that it can't leave the cave. It just it's the Pikmin fight. All right. Well, we lost a purple. I'm a little bit tilted about that, but we still have more than we started with, and I think I actually have more at the base. I could be wrong on that, but 45 is a good number. Um, I think it was important to have a lot of purples, because if, if I didn't, then... Um, there might be, uh, if there's an, a 1,000 weight treasure coming up, I, I'm i still not prepared for it. I still can't carry it. I, not even, not even close. Like, I, I will need 100 purples, and I'm nowhere near it. But if I can do some of the farming right now, then I'll get more Pikmin naturally. And I already have more pick purples than I would have had um, if all of the tragedies of our first run through of this cave hadn't happened. So, I'm still ahead. Let's leave and spend our last moments in the giant's hearth. For as rough as the past couple of episodes have been, this is still my favorite area of the game. It's... It has, a, it has such a similar vibe to the forest navel, and it almost feels like to me an above ground forest navel. It, it was a little bit mean. Yeah, that's, that's fine. In fact, that's good. That's how it should be. The caves were nasty, and while it wasn't quite the, the difficulty curve I had imagined it would be, there's still another area, which looks to be an entire area based on, on the totals of, of the captains and treasure and stuff. And it's, it's really starting to ramp up. So much so that a lot of the little jankitudes are, are starting to show. A lot of the cracks are starting to show. But as an area, it's it's so cool what they did with the, the cinder cones. This is a sweet mechanic, and it is used to its absolute fullest extent in this game. Yes, it's a tiny bit janky, but Bomb Rocks and Pikmin 1 were way worse. There's just a mix of fire, water, and rocks is something that when combined like this is unique. This area so far is is really going to stick out in my mind, more so than the tides of the serene shores. It's... I like it. It's just a good area. I suppose I should probably... Actually, how many sprays do I even have at this point? 32? Yeah, I'm probably basically good for the rest of the game. I could use spray... I'm, I might end up using sprays constantly next episode in or I guess in the next area I think I'm to that point in fact you know what if that's my goal I've never done that before but I'm gonna I'm gonna set up for it uh get out whites and get out purples because that's what I I had been doing the reason why is because purples will knock uh, will knock the berries down really quick, and the whites, if they carry them, will carry them fast. It's not really important that they're carried fast. It's more important that the berries are plucked fast, because that means they'll respawn quicker. So let's do half of our Pikmin here. You know, I, I've told this story before in playing Pikmin 2, but I think I'll, I'm going to tell it here as well. When I was a kid... Um, I couldn't beat the final boss of, of Pikmin 2, but that never stopped me from playing that game. I, it's still, to date, one of my most played video games of all time. And when I couldn't beat the final boss, me and my sister would just farm. So I learned all the little intricacies of the game. The bull, the, my famous, actually, it is actually kind of famous, my famous bull bear trap. Can Ochi actually get up here? Oh, he could. He, he can if he does some platforming. Uh, send him there. My infamous bull bear trap. 
all the little idiosyncrasies of all of the enemies. It's... No, I, 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 for a second I thought I could interact with that. And over time, um, I, I would just collect sprays, because that was the only thing left to do after I got all the treasures, but I still couldn't beat the final boss. I would farm, I would farm Pikmin and farm sprays. That's it. And so I would, I had an obscene amount, but I would never use them. It was like playing Final Fantasy and never using your Phoenix Downs. I would never use them. And Ochi actually scratched that. You're going to go back here because I'm not going to make that mistake. I've made that mistake before. And if we can get to that point in this game and then also then use all of the sprays, I think that would be kind of a cool uh, conclusion. A cool conclusion to my, my Pikmin journey because this is... It's definitely not going to be the last game in the franchise. You know what? I'm paranoid. You guys did a good job. And we're going to call it quits there. You good? No no Pikmin left? Okay. Because I'm, I'm not going to lose that many purples. <laughs> I, I've already thrown many Pikmin's lives away. And I'm not going to keep doing that. Switch back to Jeff and view this, su this sunset. The stairs, the rock wall. This area is so pretty. And it really encapsulates one of my new favorite seasons, which is the season of smoke. There's a teepee over there. So much nostalgia is tied to me in this area. Childhood camping trips and that wonderful smell of, of burgers with very little seasoning. Just salt and pepper, really. Stuff hodgepodge and cobbled together. Ooh, the 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 stovetop popcorn that smell just tied right into it. It makes me really excited for for see, uh, spring and summer to come again, so I can barbecue. The smell of mesquite. Ah, oh, yes, I love I love it. Great area, unique is going to stand out in my mind. Until I die as one of the most unique, uh, I almost said Zelda, <laughs> Pikmin areas. And we will set our sights on the setting sun. Not a new horizon. Not yet, anyway. Because we have some night missions to explore. And I've heard some dire warnings from a captain about the night exploration of the giant's hearth. We've already fought fought two smoky progs at the same time. I dread what is in store for us in, in the night expeditions. But at the same time, I'm kind of excited. If I can if I can knock those out and truly conquer this area, then maybe I can leave it with a, a content smile on my face that while I lost a lot of Pikmin, while I threw away a lot of life and a lot of life was thrown away on, of its own accord, I conquered it in the end. 1%! Yeah, yeah! We lost a purple, but we gained more, so we're fine? Question mark? Wow. We're working off the assumption that Nelly was abducted and brought to an unexplored area. That's right, her colleague's dog. Colleague Dob says she he saw her being carried off by a dog. A mysterious giant dog. I wonder how fluffy it is, because that could be a whole lot of fluff. Do you think its eyes are round and cute? And what do its ears look like? And its tail? We need to get to the bottom of this. Let's find that dog. Isn't the dog just moss? I mean, I know I kind of found some strange clarity and came back to myself, but like, it's, it's moss, right? Shepard, it, you're not responding. Uh, whatever. I'll just go back to Louie's recipe book. See you guys tonight for the night missions. And maybe we'll, we'll fight five Smoky Progs. I think I could handle that. I have a dog. What are they going to do? I have a dog. Come on. They don't stand a chance. See you then.